Hey, it's Jeff Salzenstein here. And how would you like to know the key components that impact the racket drop during the serve phase of the swing? You can see the racket drop right here. Very, very good racket drop. We're going to show a comparison with one of my students giving when I was giving him a lesson. And we're going to break it down for you right now. So we're going to learn the different components that can help you with your racket drop. So let's back it up right now. And obviously, I'm serving inside the baseline as an example, right? And what we want to focus on is, first of all, the first move. So you can see there's a lot of shoulder turn in the first move right here. It's very, very important to have that shoulder turn. Many great pro players don't serve the way that I do. They actually delay their shoulder turn and then turn the shoulder later in the motion. I prefer to have that shoulder turn start early like Federer and Sampras. So <clears throat> this type of shoulder turn can really help you with your racket drop. So we get to the next phase. There's the trophy position right there. And there's a lot of relaxation in my hand at this point. I'm not squeezing too tight. And I want you to notice right here at the racket drop, you can see how that elbow is high and look at that look at that arch in the body that means that i have flexibility <clears throat> in the thoracic area of the spine not the lower back when people really curve the low back a lot that means that they're either tight in the hips or they're tight in the thoracic spine and here i've worked a lot on my hip mobility and also my thoracic spine which is the, the mid back and this is one reason I can create this curve, and this actually helps racket drop. So let's actually bring in one of my students. We were giving him a lesson. This student is 14 years old. He's grown a lot in the last year. He's actually had some arm problems. And we take a look at his serve, and notice how he makes his first move, and there's not a lot of shoulder turn. Of course, I've been wanting him to turn his shoulder sooner, but he tends to gravitate towards moving with his arms first, which a lot of players do. So look at the difference when the ball is released, how much turn I have in my shoulders, and he has no turn. He's moving from his arms, and this is going to impact racket drop. So if you're a player that moves with his arms first, which most people do, and don't turn with the shoulders first, your racket drop may be impacted. Notice how the ball is going up. He still has not turned his shoulders yet. You actually see pros serving like this. So I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying it could impact racket drop. So finally at this phase, he's in his trophy position, okay? And notice that position right there and compare it to mine. Look at how much shoulder turn I have at this phase of the swing. Notice how the hips on uh, for me have turned. So the belly is facing towards the back fence. His belly is facing more towards the side fence. There's actually more curve in his low back here. So he's not really using his hips properly and his bo body properly. And there's not enough shoulder turn. All of this can impact racket drop. So now he's going to go swing. So notice at this part of the swing, this tossing arm is still up. His tossing arm is starting to drop at this point. So there's a rhythm issue with his serve. The rhythm's not quite there. Okay, look at the difference there. Look at the turn that I have here. Okay, I'm pushing off my back foot a little bit more. He isn't. Okay, he's not really pushing off as much. Doesn't have turn in the hips. Got the curved spine. Not enough shoulder turn. Tossing hand dropping. You can see the inefficiencies. You can see where things are breaking down. Now, that's where he goes. Look at where his, look at where his hand is. It's it's, it's above his head. Okay. My hand's a little lower, and it flips down right there. Now watch his hand flip down. Okay, watch this. So he doesn't really go up with his elbow first. He doesn't lead with this elbow. He kind of leads with the hand. Watch the difference here. Watch how I lead with my elbow. See that? Look at the difference there. So you see how my hand is below the elbow? His hand is above the elbow. There might be a restriction in um, <clears throat> shoulder flexibility, which we in range of motion, which we found to be true when we got to a uh, physical therapist. But we can also see there's less curve here, less curve in the back, 
Again, we don't want the curve to come from the low back. We want the flexibility here, and we want that dynamic mobility in the hips. But this, this racket drop is not happening at the level that my racket drop is happening at. So we've got to work on improving the mechanics of his body, and we've got to keep working on the mechanics of the serve, a better shoulder turn, a better, um, a better shoulder turn, a better hip turn, more relaxation in the hand. This hand's probably not relaxed enough. He's probably gripping tighter and holding on. Leading with the elbow first, right, up to the ball instead of, in this case, the hand is leading up to the ball. So that's when, when I teach the serve as a serve surgeon, I focus more on I focus on the technique and the body both. How do we get the technique to be more solid? How do we get the body to work better? So in summary, if you want to improve your racket drop, first of all, your hand has to be nice and relaxed. Okay, You have to keep a relaxed hand. I think having a good first move is very helpful. Turning these hips is very important. Making sure this tossing arm stays up a little bit longer as the racket's dropping. With this serve over here, we didn't see that. We saw, we saw the hands already dropping there. Okay, my hand is staying up more, so that's important. And then leading with the elbow. You also got to upgrade the body. Again, turn the shoulders, turn the hips, push off the back foot more, improve the thoracic mobility hip mobility, shoulder mobility, lots of great components. So hopefully you enjoyed this video today and we'll see you at the next lesson. If you enjoyed this video analysis, you can go ahead and give us a, a like, uh, let us know thumbs up that you like this video, subscribe to our channel, make sure your notifications are turned on so that you'll be updated on videos. Thanks so much for your time today and we'll see you at the next video lesson.